If you've been following my channel for a while, then you probably know that I like to talk a lot about the various technologies out there that people are using for data science. R, Python, SAS, SQL, Julia, I've covered all of that. But I haven't talked about Power BI yet. Until today, I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So I, like a lot of other people who create data science related content, am a huge fan of open source technologies and for data science, creating as much output as possible using a reproducible programming language. I'm far from the only one who has that view. So Hadley Wickham, that's the chief scientist of our studio and a prominent professor, gave a talk at the Association for Computing Machinery in Chicago about how you can't do data science in a GUI. But Power BI is a super popular tool in the business intelligence as well as data science worlds. And it has the ability to integrate with R and Python such that you can write scripts in those languages directly inside of Power BI. So it was certainly created with data science in mind, at least to a certain extent. So for those of you out there who are up and coming data professionals, I'm going to talk about whether or not you should learn Power BI. Now the answer is a little bit nuanced and my answer might actually surprise you a little bit. To answer that question, I'm going to dive into various things like what it is and what the high level capabilities are, how popular it is, what the relative learning curve of it is, how it should fit into a data scientist's general stack of knowledge, and then overall, is it worth your investment? Before I do that though, please take just less than one second to smash the like button to this video because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also in the description of this video, I will have a link to my Patreon account. So if you guys would be willing to support me that way, it would be massively appreciated. As one final disclaimer, I'm not affiliated with Microsoft in any way, shape or form. I'm just a guy who makes YouTube videos. So first, just some background on Power BI. The very first version of it was released in 2011, but in its current, more mature version, it was released to the public around 2015. And the goal with it is to help you create interactive visualizations and reports, dashboards, and other business intelligence goodies. Now it is considered proprietary software, but you can do a ton for free just by downloading Power BI Desktop. And the link to do that will obviously be in the description. Naturally, there are versions of it with advanced cloud deployment controls, enterprise-wide BI, and general things like that. But for your layman who's just trying to learn it, it shouldn't cost a dime. Contrast that with something like Tableau, which at the time I'm recording this video, the only thing you can get for free is a 14-day trial. As far as popularity and its overall adoption in the broader industry is concerned, Power BI is not a programming language, that's important to understand, so it isn't tracked by something like the Tyobi Index. And it's honestly extremely difficult to find any kind of breakdown on its popularity and the number of job listings for it in the data science world specifically. However, just as a point of reference, a study of data science jobs done from 2017 to 2019, which you can see on KD Nuggets, found that Tableau was listed as the eighth most listed technology in data science jobs posted on Indeed, coming in at just under 10,000 job listings. Now, Power BI was not included in that same analysis, but it's important to understand it is the second place market leader of the business intelligence market behind Tableau. And just anecdotally, I've seen it in use at both of my last two data science jobs, which were at small and mid-sized companies respectively. Now none of this is to serve as any kind of rigorous scientific analysis, but all that to say is you're very likely to run into some data science jobs out there that involve Power BI. Now let's talk a little bit more about why you would be using a tool like Power BI in a data science role in the first place. Like I mentioned earlier, the core appeal there is going to be so that you can create interactive visualizations and dashboards, much like the kind of thing that you might do using tools like Plotly and Dash and Shiny in Python and R respectively. 
But of course, the capabilities go far beyond that. You can read data in from a whole variety of sources, ranging from Excel spreadsheets, text files and CSVs, SQL Server databases, Azure blob storage, and even HTML tables available on the web. Once data is loaded into Power BI, then you can use what's called Power Query. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with that from an Excel context, it's basically a data preparation and transformation service. So you can do a lot with that without writing any code, but for more complex procedures, yeah, you're gonna have to write some code. And for that, Power BI offers two different expression languages, and those are DAX and Power Query M, also known as the M language. More on those in a minute. All of that to say, you have a fairly nice array of options for manipulation of your data and getting it into a generally clean format so that you can do more fun stuff like creating interactive visualizations. But wait, it gets even better. Power BI can integrate directly with either R or Python, and so you can use those two languages either for your data transformation purposes or even incorporating R or Python visuals directly into a dashboard. But then I'd add here, just from a motivational standpoint, you may have some familiarity with R and Python, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're an expert in Shiny or Dash, because those are very complex packages with enormous learning curves. Now, like I said, you've got two different expression languages in Power BI. Those are DAX and the M language. And both of these languages are fairly Excel statements, maybe SQL-like. And I think overwhelmingly for most people, it's going to take a lot less time to get really proficient at those things than it is for full-fledged programming languages like R or Python. All that to say, most people can probably learn how to create a reasonably aesthetically pleasing dashboard in Power BI with capabilities to filter and slice and dice your data however you want in much less time than it would take to get really good at something like that in Shiny or Dash. So with that, let's dive a little bit more into the learning curve for Power BI and the amount of time it'll probably take to get really proficient at it. Honestly, you can probably get to the point where you can build something simple and straightforward in as little as an hour. I'll have a link in the description of this video to a video by YouTube creator Kevin Stratvert. And now that video is 28 minutes long, but I've gone through it myself with the full example in it. And I can virtually guarantee if you go through the full 28 minutes of it, you'll know your way around as well as be able to create some simple visualizations. Also have a link to a video from YouTube creator Avi Singh, and this one is an hour long. It's a little bit more detailed, and he gets into things like writing DAX code. But again, I've gone through that one myself, and I can personally vouch for, if you go through that one, you're going to have at least a beginner's level of comfort with Power BI. But like anything though, once you hit a real life project, that's when you're going to stumble around and hit some roadblocks. But that's also where you're going to accomplish the lion's share of your learning. So it'll take time. Those tutorials also don't walk through things like R and Python integration that data scientists will be interested in. And obviously, there's no tutorial out there that's going to make you a master at anything without going out and doing the actual thing. But I think overall, the time it takes to master Power BI is nowhere near the same level of time that it takes to master a programming language like R or Python. So everything I've described in this video so far has been overwhelmingly positive. Maybe you're asking yourself at this point of the video if there's some big catch that I'm about to drop. And no, not really, there's not. And in fact, if you're more interested in business analytics compared to data science, and your core skills are SQL and Power BI, honestly, I think you're in a pretty good position to get yourself hired somewhere. But for data scientists though, I've talked so far about how easy Power BI is to learn compared to R or Python, but I think it's important to realize it's not a substitute for a full stack programming language like R or Python, and it's also not a substitute for having a solid fundamental knowledge of SQL. Earlier this year, I did a video on a study pathway for up and coming data scientists, and I laid out in that video that step number one people should learn if they don't know it already is statistics, then number two is SQL, and then number three is either R or Python. 
And I do think that for a lot of people, they're going to be best served by first getting themselves acquainted with things like the other one of R or Python, linear algebra, the principles of user experience, and machine learning. Having said that, a core tenet of data science is being able to tell compelling stories using powerful visualizations. And to that end, Power BI is a great tool. Similarly, maybe you're somebody who works in a data science capacity and you find yourself tasked with creating an interactive dashboard and you have to do it pretty quickly. If it comes down to learning new technologies, it's probably going to be faster to learn Power BI compared to something like Dash or Shiny. But here's the thing. Business intelligence and data science do have tons of overlap, but they are not the same thing. Data science is going to bring you problems like dimensionality reduction, text analytics, time series modeling, just a lot of different things like that for which the first tool to attack those problems is just not going to be Power BI. So where I think Power BI will make sense for most data scientists is to supplement a solid fundamental set of capabilities and toolkit that consists of things like SQL and one or both of R or Python. So in short, it's important to remember that there's tons of different types of data scientists out there, and it varies a lot depending on what area you're in, what sort of industry you're working in, and your specific organization. You might see a lot of data science job listings out in your area that call for Power BI. And similarly, maybe you are the type of data scientist who really loves creating fancy and colorful dashboards and visualizations. And to that end, even though there's tons of different technologies that us data scientists could pick up for the first time, or at least even sharpen our capabilities in, Especially when you couple that with the fact Power BI is fairly easy to pick up, it may very well be worth the investment of your time to learn and get proficient at. Again, my recommendation is to learn statistics, SQL, and one of R or Python first. And during that and after the fact, I am a really big believer in focusing on one thing at a time and getting really good at it. I think for a lot of people, at some point in their data science journey, Power BI is really going to be worth it. It's just a question for you, based on your own interests and what organizations around you are doing, where you want to prioritize it. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you found it entertaining or useful, please consider sharing this video. Again, smash the like button and also let me know down in the comments below what you think. And if you're a data scientist who's used Power BI, let me know what your experience with it has been. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.